In the previous video, we created a reusable modal component for the information on how the application works. In this video, we're going to create a search input and make a request to Mapbox and use geocoding service to populate results based on the user's search value. Within the views folder, we have a file called homeview.view, and this is where we're going to be creating our search input. So let's close the side panel here. Now within our template, let's begin with the markup. And on this main tag, we're going to apply a few classes. The first one we're going to apply is a container class, and then also we're going to make all the text white by using a class of text white. Then inside of the main tag, we'll create a div to wrap the search and search results, and we'll apply a few classes. We'll do some padding on the top with PT4, we'll do some margin on the bottom with MB8, and then we'll also give this a position of relative. And inside of this div, we'll start off by creating our input, and then let's add a placeholder, and we'll specify this to say, search for a city or state. And then we'll apply some classes. So the first one we want to apply is some padding on the top and bottom. So we'll do PY2. Then we'll do some padding on the left and right with PX1. Then we'll have this take up the full width available by using a class of W full. Then we'll change the background to transparent. Then we'll have a border on the bottom by saying border B, which will give it a width of one pixel. And then we're going to add some focus states here. So the first thing we're going to do is change the border color on focus to our weather secondary. So we'll say border and then we'll do weather secondary. Also on focus, you want to remove the outline that we have on the input itself by default. So on focus state, we'll also say outline none. And lastly, on focus, we're going to create a custom shadow. So we're going to specify focus here again. And instead of typing out shadow SM or shadow MD, we're actually going to create a custom shadow, which I'm going to paste in here. So how we create a custom shadow is by using what is called a arbitrary value, which is uh, defined by these two brackets here. And then we can define our custom shadow inside of here. All right, so if we save that now and head over to the application, you can see we now have our search input. And when we click in on here, we have this nice focus in effect that lets us know that we are inside of the search input for accessibility. Now to capture the user's input, we need to create a new variable within our script and then hook that variable up to our input here. So let's go inside of our script tag here and create a new variable and we'll call this search query. And then we'll set it equal to a new ref with the initial value of an empty string. And then on the input, we can use what is called a vModel directive. And then we can set this equal to our newly created variable of search query. And now what's going to happen is when a user types inside of this input, it's going to be captured and set equal to our variable here of search query. To populate our application with search results, we're going to be using a platform called Mapbox, and they offer a service called Geolocation, which will provide us locations based on a search query. Now, to continue following along with the series, you're going to want to create yourself a free Mapbox account, which should only take you a few moments to do. Now, as of recent, Mapbox has began to require you to enter some card details to verify your identity while creating your free account. Now I know many of you watching this might be uncomfortable with the fact that you have to enter your card details in order to create your free account. However, I should mention that Mapbox is not going to charge you unless you go over the free limit that they offer, which for the geocoding API is 100,000 free requests per month. Once you created your account, we're going to come down to the documentation section here, and then we want to scroll down to the search API section where we have the geocoding API. And what we're going to be using is something called forward geocoding, which is going to use this endpoint right here. To make this get request inside of our project, we're going to open up the terminal here and we want to install a new package called Axios. So we'll type an npm i and then we'll say Axios. Then inside of our script, we're going to create a new function and we're going to call this get search results and we'll set this equal to a new arrow function. Now, how we're going to be making our search request is through a lazy search. And what that means is when a user is typing inside of this input here, after a certain amount of time that they stop typing, then we want to make our request to the Mapbox geocoding API. And how we're going to do that is by using what is called a set timeout method, which will execute our code after a certain amount of time that we specify. So for this, we want to create a new variable outside of our function, and we're going to call this query timeout. And we're going to set this equal to a ref again with the initial value of null. 
Then inside of the get search results function, we want to target our query timeout variable here and set it equal to a new set timeout method. So we'll say query timeout and we'll do dot value and we'll set this equal to a new set timeout method. And this accepts a callback and then also the amount of time that you want to wait before invoking the code inside of the set timeout method, which for this we're gonna say 300 milliseconds. Now within the callback for our set timeout method, the first thing that we wanna do before we make any type of request to our API is ensure that there actually is value inside of our search query variable here. So first off, we're gonna say if, and we're gonna target our search query dot value, and we wanna make sure this is not equal an empty string. So if this if statement passes, that means we can then make our request to our geocoding API. So here within the documentation, I'm going to copy this endpoint. And as you can see, we have two places that we need to fill in some information. We have this endpoint value and also the search text. Now for the endpoint parameter, we're going to be using the value of mapbox.places. And then for the search text, we're going to be using our variable here of search query. So let's create a new variable and we'll call this result. And we'll set this equal to Axios and then we'll say dot get here and then using backtick since we're going to be using some interpolation, we'll paste in this endpoint. Now since this endpoint is going to return a promise, we want to wait for this to finish before we continue on with this function. So we're going to say await here and in order to use await, we need to define this function as a synchronous here inside of our set timeout method. Also to use Axios inside of our file here, we need to import it within our script. So we'll say import Axios and then we'll specify from Axios. And as I mentioned, we have a few portions of this endpoint we need to replace. So the first part is going to be the actual endpoint we're going to be hitting, which is going to be mapbox.places. And then for the search text here, we want to specify our variable here of search query. So what we're going to do is the money sign, then two brackets, and then we'll say search query dot value. Now to make this request, we're also going to need an API key, and you can find that here on the dashboard of your Mapbox account. So we're gonna copy this and head back over to our project, and we're going to store this API key inside of a new variable. So let's create that, and we're gonna call this Mapbox API key, and then we'll set it equal to a string and paste in our API key here. Then on the end of this endpoint, we're going to add a question mark to add a new optional parameter, and this is called access underscore token, and then we want to set this equal to our new variable here of Mapbox API key. So this request here is going to return us some data and we're going to want to output that data within our application here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable and we're going to call this mapbox search results and we'll set this equal to a ref with the initial value of null. Then below the request inside of our function, we're going to target our new variable and say dot value and we're going to set it equal to the result dot data and then we want to act as something here called features. What we also want to do is if this is not true, then we're going to target our variable again and the value and we'll set this equal to null. Now what we also want to do is after we set our data here to our variable, we also want to return out of this function. And the reason why we want to do this is because currently if this is true, all this logic will run inside of here, but also this is going to run after it and it's going to set our data back to null, which is what we don't want. We only want this to be set to null if our search query dot value equals an empty string and this return statement here is going to return us out of the function so that if it is true, this never gets executed. The last thing we need to do for our function is we want to clear our set timeout each time this function is ran. So we can do this by using a method called clear timeout and then passing in the value of our query timeout variable and then the value. So the reason why we need this clear timeout method is because like I mentioned, we're going to be creating what is called a lazy search. And how a lazy search works is we're going to listen for a user to type into this input by using an event listener called input. And each time that we hear this event, we're going to run our function called get search results. And what our clear timeout method is going to do is each time this function is ran when they type in a letter here into the input, it is going to clear out the previous set timeout method that was previously initiated. And then once they stop typing, this won't be ran again. And then our set timeout is going to run after 300 milliseconds and then reach out to our geolocation API. 
And to see this working, what we can do is log out to the console our Mapbox search results. So we'll say Mapbox search results dot value here. And then if we come over to the application and we inspect this, if we open up our console and we can just make this a little bit bigger here. And if we type in a city here like Ohio, as you can see, then we're going to get logged out of the console here. The return from our API after 300 milliseconds have passed after we stop typing. Now, one additional thing that I'm going to add to our API call to improve the results from it is an optional parameter called types. Now, by default, this API returns a variety of different data types. So we have country, region, postcode, and so on here. Now, for this application to improve the results, we can set the types to only be placed, which is what we're looking for for our application. So after our access token, we can just say and, and we can set the types to equal place, and that will improve the results that we see from this API. So now that we're retrieving the results from our API, we want to output those results into our application here. So below our input, we're gonna create a UL, and we're going to apply some classes. So the first thing we wanna do is position this absolute. We're gonna set the background color to our weather secondary. We'll update all the font to be white. We'll have this take up the full width available, and we'll also add a box shadow here, shadow medium, and then we'll apply some padding to the top and bottom by saying PY2 or eight pixels, and then we'll do some padding on the left and right with PX1. Then lastly, since we are using position absolute, we're gonna set a custom top property here using a arbitrary value, which we've seen already before with our box shadow here, and we can define a custom arbitrary value by using these two brackets here, then specifying the value that we want to set this top to. So for this application, we're gonna use 66 pixels. Then inside of this UL, we're gonna create an LI tag and we're gonna be using what is called a V4 loop to iterate over our Mapbox search results and I'll put a LI tag for each result that we have. So inside of this V4 loop, we first want to define a param which is going to reference each item that we have in our array. So we'll call this param search result and then we wanna specify in and then the array that we wanna loop through which is gonna be our Mapbox search results. When we use a v4 loop, we also want to define what is called a key, which is a unique identifier for this particular li item. So for this, we're gonna reference our search result here. And on each one of these results, we have an ID. So we can say search result dot ID here. And we'll also add a few classes here. So we'll do some padding on the top and bottom of two. And then we'll also add a cursor pointer. Then inside of each li tag, we want to output a property of this item in the array. So how we can do that is using must have syntax and we can reference our search result here. And then the property you want to output is called place underscore name. And as you can see inside of our application now, we have all these items listed out. Now, the last thing we need to do is hide our search results if we don't have any. So by default, as you can see here, we don't have any search results, but we are still seeing this small box. So how we can fix that is on this UL tag itself, we can add a VF directive and only say to show this if we have search results. And as you can see here now, we no longer see that box. But if we type into the input here, something like Ohio, we now see all of our results.